You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome to episode 223 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Well, hello there, gang. It's Sean back at you with another episode of The Soul Forge, where we're going to forge your soul. We're going to beat it and pound it and bang it into shape. It's going to be such a great soul, you won't even recognize yourself after this episode. So if you're prepared for that, keep on listening. If you're not prepared, listen anyway, because I love it when you do. No uh, new feedback this week, um, but that's okay. Actually, I, I did. I did get some feedback. I'm kidding. Uh, let's see here. Let me just pull that up here. It's actually a really, really good one. All right. It's uh, for episode 221 from our good friend Bill. And he says, actually, let me just uh, pull up what episode two. I'm very unorganized today, guys and girls out there in podcast land. Lots going on in life. But anyway, uh, that was the episode 221 was Fast and Loud, where I was talking about how I wanted the new Picard statue and then talked about the CPAP machine and all that kind of fun stuff. That was a grab bag episode, I believe. So Bill says, hi, Sean, do whatever you have to to work with that CPAP machine. If sleep leaves you feeling tired, you have a problem that's only less serious compared to people with big weight gain from inadequate sleep. Healing burns lots of calories and we do most of our healing when our bodies go immobile during stage three and four sleep. Ask the medical people if they'll put you in touch with someone who's using the same kind of mask they gave you. Try watching TV with the mask on and the machine running. If it's leaking, you'll feel it on your skin and probably hear it. I know that the army taught for tightening the straps on the protective masks. With your off hand, hold the center of the harness against the back of your head against the upper center back with your other hand adjust the straps one at a time of course if you didn't need that CPAP machine they wouldn't be giving you this trial period the only way it won't help you is if you have some additional problems they haven't uncovered and you need the CPAP machine to uncover it and forget about buying a four-figure spaceship model I I think he actually meant the statue but uh, that's only for seriously rich people and we aren't that that's another reason you need the CPAP machine your mind is too tired for common sense to brush aside such bad ideas you have so many collectibles in totes so many more than you can display on shelves because you have too much of your brother Robin in you get some sleep get fewer bad ideas stay safe Bill and at the end I I had to laugh because that, that was hilarious and very well written, Bill. I appreciate your feedback. Uh, but yeah, you're right. That kind of statue is for rich people, and I'm definitely not a rich person. Uh, it's, like I said, about $2,500, and you can pay for it over nine monthly uh, installments. But still, it's it's a bit crazy, and I shouldn't do it. Uh, and I do have too many collectibles in totes, more than I can display. And uh, yeah. I've got some of my brother Robin in me, or he's got some of me in him. I don't know, because I am 10 years older than that guy. But uh, get some good sleep and get fewer bad ideas. And, yeah, I I can't agree more with you, Bill. That's that's pretty much it. So appreciate the feedback. Uh, Always love hearing from listeners. That's awesome. Um, But this week's topic... Did I mention it already? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm so discombobulated. It's, It's been a rough few days uh maybe that'll be another topic for another day but anyway we're going to do the five love languages and how the heck did i come up with this topic why have i never touched on it before what is going on around the soul forge well that's a very good question you didn't ask but i'm going to answer it anyway uh remember a few weeks ago i was in uh, back home in the sioux and uh 
visiting with uh, the brothers and the sister-in-law and and selling uh, all my stuff at the uh, Steel City Nerd Con. Well, one of the nights that I was there, uh, sitting on the couch at Brother Curtis's house and his wife, Kate, formerly known as Debbie, uh, asked or was talking about the love languages. And uh, I said, I've heard of those, but I don't know much about it. So she sent me a quiz and that is a fun story. So what are the five love languages? Well, I'm glad you asked again. Uh, it says here, you may express affection to your significant other regularly, but do you truly take the time to make sure you're communicating it the way your partner wants to receive it? Even love can sometimes get lost in translation when two partners speak different love languages. And it says these five love languages are the five different ways of expressing and receiving love. And what are they? Well, You've got words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. And of course, not everyone communicates love in the same way, and uh, people will always have different ways to express and how they prefer to receive love. And the concept of the love languages was developed by a doctor named Gary Chapman, and of course, his book is called The Five love languages the secret to love that lasts and i guess the best thing to do is just go ahead and describe what these five love languages are and i did i told you what they were but i didn't describe them so the first one is called words of affirmation can you guess what that means well i'm going to tell you People with words of affirmation as a love language value verbal acknowledgments of affection, including frequent I love you's, compliments, words of appreciation, verbal encouragement, and often frequent digital communication like texting and social media engagement. Oof. So, uh, written and spoken shows of affection matter the most to these people, and these expressions make them feel understood and appreciated. So if your partner and their is their their primary love language is words of affirmation, you got to say I love you all the time. You got to tell them they're beautiful. You got to say, "Oh, thanks for doing that." And uh, "Oh, yeah, it's it's awesome that you did that and I'm so glad we're together." And uh, text me 10 times an hour and uh, post everything on my social media to let the world know that you love me. So that's that's the first one. Words of affirmation. Uh, the second one is quality time. Uh, so people whose love language is quality time feel the most adored when their partner actively wants to spend time with them and is always down to hang out. They particularly love when active listening, eye contact, and full presence are prioritized hallmarks in the relationship. So this is basically all about giving your undivided attention to that one special person. No distractions like TV or phones or anything else. Uh, there's a strong desire to actively spend time with the significant other, having meaningful conversation and shared recreational activities. So if your number one love language is quality time, all you want to do is spend time with the person enjoying activities together. That seems kind of nice, doesn't it? All right. Number three is acts of service. And it says... People whose primary love language is acts of service value when the partner goes out of their way to make your life easier. Things like bringing you soup when you're sick or making your coffee for you in the morning or picking up your dry cleaning or filling your car with gas. Uh, you know, just that kind of stuff. Uh, so this love language is for people who believe that actions speak louder than words. Unlike those who prefer to hear how much they're cared for, people on this type of love language like to be shown how they're appreciated. Doing the smaller and bigger choice chores to make their lives easier or more comfortable is highly cherished by these folk. So if acts of service is uh, the way you like to express your love or be have it expressed to you, then uh, just do things for that person. Makes sense. Next one is gifts. And I think this is a 
pretty straightforward. But what it says is, you feel loved when people give you visual symbols of love. It's not about the monetary value of these things, but the symbolic thought behind the gift or the item. So people with this style recognize and value the gift giving process, the careful reflection, the 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 deliberate choosing of the object to, re to represent the relationship and the emotional benefits from receiving the present. So uh, these people enjoy being gifted something that's both physical and meaningful. And so the key is to give meaningful things that matter to them and reflect their values, not necessarily yours. So that means uh, if your partner... Uh, their love language is gifts, then give them something they want, not something that you want them to have. I guess that makes sense. And the final one, physical touch. So people with physical touch as their love language feel loved when they receive physical signs of affection, including kissing, holding hands, cuddling on the couch, and sex. Physical intimacy and touch can be incredibly affirming and serve as a powerful emotional connector for people with this love language. The roots go back to our childhood. Some people only felt deep affection and love by their parents when they were held, kissed, and touched. So people who communicate their appreciation through this language, when they consent to it, feel appreciated when they're hugged, kissed, or cuddled. They value the feeling of warmth and comfort that comes with physical touch. So physical touch makes perfect sense. Just, just touch me. Touch me here, touch me there, touch me everywhere. Maybe that's not how you're going to say it, but uh, that's that's basically how that works. So uh, before I get into how to communicate these five love languages and what actions to take, let's play the promo for another podcast on the ESO Network, followed by the vaccination PSA. Welcome to the Ring of Thunder, the most electrifying wrestling podcast in the Thunderverse and the ESO Network. From the power of the people's host, Sexy Thor, critics say, it doesn't matter what the critics say. You already know you're in for a hammer swinging, burrito eating, mic blazing, hair raising time with this weekly wrestling adventure, WWE, AEW, Impact, and whatever else I can possibly fit. If you hear what the thunder is talking. Welcome to Dr. Geek's Laboratory. Dr. Geek here with another reminder that the ESO Network is pro-science and pro-vaccine. We urge you to be a superhero and protect yourself, your family, and your fellow geeks around the world. Don't be fooled by the forces of evil and their anti-science misinformation campaign. Consult the latest CDC guidelines, your doctor, and get the COVID vaccine today. All right, there we go. Great, great podcast promo and vaccination promo and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've all got your masks and your vaccinations and uh, physical distancing and all that good stuff. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how to communicate your love language. If your love language is words of affirmation, you have to encourage, affirm, appreciate, empathize, and listen actively. So what do you do? You send an unexpected note, a text, or a card, and you genuinely encourage. Okay, so if physical touch is the next one. Uh, it, this is a nonverbal communication. Use body language and touch to express love. So hug, kiss, hold hands, show physical affection often, and make intimacy a thoughtful priority. And then you've got receiving gifts. Thoughtfulness, make your spouse a priority and speak purposefully. So the action to take is give thoughtful gifts and gestures. Small things matter in a big way. Express gratitude when receiving the gift. Because that's important. If your partner's primary love language is gift giving uh, and you get something from that partner, they're obviously going to expect you to show all kinds of appreciation, even if that's not your primary love language. Makes sense. And next one, quality time. So uninterrupted and focused conversations and one-on-one -on -one time is critical so in order to make that you create special moments together take walks and do small things with your partner weekend getaways are huge yep makes sense to me and acts of service is the final one use action phrases like i'll help they want to know you're with them partnered with them so what do you do uh, you do chores together or make them breakfast in bed go out of your way to help alleviate their daily workload 
Okay, so that is a lot of fun. And now we know all about the five different love languages. Did I tell you at the beginning of this whole conversation that uh, Kate made me take the test? Well, she did. And let me pull up my results here and I will tell you what they were. Hi, I'm Hugo Award winning science fiction writer Robert J. Sawyer and you're listening to Soul Forge Podcast. You've been listening to me for years and years on the podcast. What do you think my number one love language is? Well, according to the test or the quiz that I took, my number one love language is quality time at 37%. This thing that I took the quiz, it says, in the vernacular of quality time, nothing says I love you like full undivided attention. Being there for this type of person is critical, but really being there with the TV off, fork and knife down, and all chores and tasks on standby makes your significant other feel truly special and loved. Distractions, postponed dates, or the failure to listen can be especially hurtful. Quality time also means sharing quality conversation and quality activities. And yeah, that's my number one. Just spend time with me, do things together, doesn't matter what they are, let's just enjoy our time together. So that that uh, does explain me quite a bit. So that was number one for me at 37%. The next one at 23% was words of affirmation. Actions don't always speak louder than words. If this is your love language, unsolicited compliments mean the world to you. Hearing the words, I love you, are important. Hearing the reasons behind that love sends your spirit skyward. Insults can leave you shattered and are not easily forgotten. Kind, encouraging, and positive words are truly life-giving. And that's uh, that's me to a lesser extent. Yes, 23%. It's, uh, yeah, I-, I love to hear I love you. And uh, insults, yeah, they, they stick around a long time. Uh, let's see, the next one is physical touch at 20%. So that's the third one for me. And it says, this language isn't all about the bedroom. A person whose primary language is physical touch is, not surprisingly, very touchy. That's me. Uh, Hugs, pats on the back, holding hands, and thoughtful touches on the arm, shoulder, or face. They can all be ways to show excitement, concern, care, and love. Physical presence and accessibility are crucial, while neglect or abuse can be unforgivable and destructive. Physical touch fosters a sense of security and belonging in any relationship. And ask any of my girlfriends, and yes, I'm very touchy-feely. Number four of five for me is acts of service at 17%. Can vacuuming the floors really be an expression of love? Absolutely. Anything you do to ease the burden of responsibilities weighing on an acts of service person will speak volumes. The words he or she most wants to hear, let me do that for you. Laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell speakers of this language their feelings don't matter. Finding ways to serve speaks volumes to the recipient of these acts. Okay, well, there you go then. And the last one for me at 3% is receiving gifts. Don't mistake this love language for materialism. The receiver of gifts thrives on the love, thoughtfulness, and effort behind the gift. If you speak this language, the perfect gift or gesture shows that you are known, you are cared for, and you are prized above whatever was sacrificed to bring the gift to you. A missed birthday, anniversary, or a hasty, thoughtless gift would be disastrous. So would the absence of everyday gestures. Gifts are visual representations of love and are treasured greatly. And, uh, yeah, I I like getting stuff, but obviously at 3%, uh, it's my least, uh, prominent love language. I like getting things, but I don't need them. I'd rather, uh, spend time with you and, uh, do a lot of hand-holding and kissing and cuddling and stuff like that. So that explains me to a T. Now, the funny thing... (laughs) Is it funny? I'm not sure. But, uh... Kate said, what's Julie's love language? I'm like, "Mm, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's the same as mine. So uh, she made me do the quiz. She made Curtis do the quiz. I I sent the quiz off to Julie because she had stayed back at home. Um, But she did it, and I got the email information. And uh, Curtis, my brother, is uh, just over four and a bit years younger than me, and I think we were the exact same, just the percentages were different. Robin may have taken it, but I don't remember what his results were. Uh, But Julie's results were totally the opposite of mine, almost. So let's see. Mine, just as a recap, were quality time, followed by words of affirmation, followed by physical touch, 
acts of service, and receiving gifts. Julie's first one at 37% was acts of service, 23% receiving gifts, 20% words of affirmation, 13% physical touch, and 7% quality time. So my number one love language is quality time. Her last love language is quality time. So that explains a lot. And does that mean we have things to work on? I'm not sure if that's what that means or not, but it definitely means that uh, we know where each other stands and how to make the other person happy and feel loved. So that's very important. And what I'm going to do in the show notes is leave the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, The quiz for you out there in podcast land to give a try and maybe ask your partner to try it too. So that way you can see where you both stand on the love language scale, how you express it and how you like to receive love. And that can be a thing to work on together so that love just flows all around and everything is great. So that's uh, that's my view from Timmins, Ontario, Canada. Hope that made sense. Um, there's no rusted robot segment this week for uh, pop culture news. Uh, I do know that uh, Another Life is supposed to be coming back for its second, I probably final season, e- e- maybe next Tuesday or sometime this week. I'm not sure. Uh, and Lost in Space is coming for its final season uh, December 1st. So that's all very good. Um, there's three episodes of La Brea out. I've recorded them all and I haven't watched a single one yet. I uh, can't say if it's good or not, but if I ever get around to it, uh, I'll let you know. So I just wanted to thank you all for listening. Uh, hope you found value in this episode and learned quite a bit. And uh, until next time, take care. And remember, any TV shows that have Star Trek actors as guest stars are officially holodeck programs and are canon. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links. And don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the T Public store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.